got to tell you, Jeff, um, I personally have been really looking forward to this. In fact, I love it. Yes, yes, Jeff, and that's right, because I know that you have a book called Anticipate, so uh, shameless uh, plug here, knowing uh, what you. your customers need and, and want, and that's some of what we're going to be talking about in this education session. So uh, Absolutely, absolutely. No, it's so nice well, to be here, and I, you know, when we talk about the customer experience, there's no other industry I can think of that's more important, you know, than the promotional products industry, having that background uh, from both sides, I really believe that, so... Yeah, right. And I, I just want to share a little bit about, about Jeff's background. For those of you who don't know, I met Jeff when he did a keynote uh, session back when I was doing education for one of the trade shows. And he's done keynotes for both PPAI and ASI. And um, he basically, uh, gosh, he's won five international pyramid awards. I only got two, Jeff. So, uh, you know, <laughs> kudos to in you three, for that. In three yeah, years. <laughs> in three years. Oh, my God. Yeah. You know, man, yeah. you're, you're dang good. And you were uh, – Worked for supplier Halo Manufacturing, and then you you ended up uh, getting out of this business, and and really you have an amazing client list. It sort of reads like the who's who of uh, some great companies here: Pepsi, Cola, IBM, Bank of America, Brinks Home Security, and of course FreePromoTips.com. You know. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, excellent. And um, so anyway, you are the author of uh, Anticipate and and Coloring Outside the Lines, and. That's really your shtick, this whole idea. I think we connect because it's really about uh, uh, thinking outside the box. That's why uh, I love to color outside the lines. Absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah. it, what better industry also for, for thinking outside the lines? I mean, for being creative. You, you, you'd be dead in this industry if you weren't creative. So. Yeah, right, absolutely. Important. Then you'd be left with just selling stuff. Now, right. speaking of anticipation, okay, we have two great companies that are, are supporting uh, this particular se session, and uh, that is uh, Vernon, the Vernon Company, and they are really, a, you know, this is a distributor organization that supports what Free Promo Tips does in a big way. They understand uh, what we're doing in terms of conveying positive information and supporting our educational efforts. So kudos to Vernon. Uh, it, it's really with support from you that that we uh, that all this stuff is possible. So so thank you guys. And uh, also, so speaking of anticipation, since we got the webcams here, our other sponsor is Maple Ridge Farms. Okay, now they mm -hmm. sent us this, and I have been anticipating. Uh, you know, this uh, for some times and, and didn't even get into this. Now, Jeff, have you gotten into this? I mean, mm -hmm. what, have, have you oh, tasted well, any of the Maple Ridge Farm stuff? Whoa, ho, hold it. You're already into it? I'm sitting here oh. eating the most amazing chocolate-covered almonds I've ever had. So uh, thank oh. you for this, Maple Ridge Farms, and, and for the whole entire package that I hope to dive into. Uh, if you can see on the camera, I hope to dive into this as soon as we're done. So. Oh, wow. Cranberry walnuts. Are we, uh, you know, this is really great. Linda, none of this for you or any other staff people. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, hey, none of this for you. Okay. Yeah. Now, also, <laughs> uh, supporting free promo tip success tracks are our title sponsors. Again, great, great company, Snugs USA, Warwick Publishing, and, and our good friends over there at AIA, a, a great distributor. And it's really, again, with the support of these companies that we're able to deliver to you buddy content like this. And one of the goals of Success Tracks is to bring in out of the industry presenters, people that you wouldn't necessarily find elsewhere. And we've really had some, some great, uh, great, great presenters. And, and uh, again, privileged to have Jeff Tobe here. Uh, and uh, so without any further ado, what I'm going to do is just uh, hand it over uh, here to Jeff, and oh my God, the list is so long. I have to go scroll down and 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 find you. So I am going to make you the presenter and let you go ahead and uh, and talk a little bit about uh, creating the uh, ultimate customer experience. Jeff, you got some control over there? I think I do. Give me a minute here. I think we're okay. You can see my. We commented okay. earlier about. Yeah, we commented earlier how, how great your slides look, and I awesome. noted that obviously a professional did that because we are creative marketing guys, uh, not graphic. Uh, anyway, hey, take Absolutely. it away, Jeff. All right. Thanks so much, Jeff. And it, like I say, it's so nice to be kind of home. I know that I, I'm not allowed to say that too too often, So, uh, but I really have a, a soft spot in my heart. I, I was a distributor, as Jeff said, for, uh, for years, and then I went on to the supplier side with Hazel Manufacturing for uh, years. So I kind of have a, a view from both sides. 
uh, may not be too updated, but I still know some of the common challenges that you're facing. And the number one thing about coloring outside the lines is really about how do we look at the industry differently than we have before? So, you know, my first question, I wish we could see everybody because my first question would be, you know, how many of you truly believe you are one of the most creative people you know? And, and um, it, only in this industry would most hands go up because when I speak in other industries, no matter what it is, most people think they're not creative because they associate creativity somehow with the fine arts. You know, I can't, I can't uh, paint, I can't uh, sketch, I'm just not creative. But creativity in a business sense, what we're going to talk about today as it applies to the customer experience, is about looking at things from a, from differently than, than you have before. Um, so I would ask you a question. You know, the question that would start is, why be more creative at what you do? You know, we're incredibly creative now. Um, we're coming up with ideas and solutions for customers all the time. But why be more creative? Well, the number one reason that I hear worldwide, and I do have the, you know, the fortune of, of traveling worldwide and working in every conceivable industry you can think of over the last 20 years, you know, the number one answer I hear is obviously to have more fun. And, and I truly believe that. I think it's contagious. People want to do business with, they want to work for, work with people who seem to enjoy what they do for a living. And so it, it, it remains top of my list. It has for many years. Uh, why be more creative to have more fun? But there are so many other reasons. I mean, what about to motivate people we work with? Um, being more creative and internally as well. Um, meaning, and I'll talk about, you'll, you'll hear me talk about uh, customer throughout my presentation. And I'll explain that in a minute. So motivating people with whom we work is internal and external. But there are others. What gives us a competitive advantage? You know, what sets us apart from everybody else who professes to be in the same profession? And, and finally, you know, things are changing so rapidly at what you do. I, I can't think of a better reason to color outside the lines. I may have been out of the industry for a while, but there was a study done, and I'm going to date myself, but um, for those of you who have been doing this for a long time, you'll, I, you'll appreciate the fact that the study was done in 1988. And I know that was a lifetime ago for most of you, but for some of us, it wasn't that long ago. 1988, SMU Business School in Dallas, Texas, and they studied change in major industries and professions in the United States and Canada. And here's what they found. If you were in the profession in 1988, you went through a, a major change in the way you do what you do every three years. So that study said that by 1991, something was going to change. Here's the thing. They redid the study um, a year and a half ago for, I think, the third time. And they found that that three years, and, and what's funny is promotional products still doesn't have its own heading, but that three years in general uh, in this business, you, went, uh, you go through a major change, it's been reduced to seven months. Seven months. And I think instinctively we know this, but what does it mean? It means something that we've been doing over the last year, it's just a standard practice, it just works for us, is going to change drastically over the next seven months. I can't think of a better reason to color outside the lines and to be more creative. So... The question then becomes this, one more reason uh, why we should be creative. You know, if you're walking around saying, well, what do I need to be more creative? There are really two issues on your customer's minds. And let me go uh, before, stop for a minute and explain this. Your external customer is easy for you to explain, but how about your internal customer? And I'm talking about anybody without whom you can't do what you do every single day. And... Um, that's, that's kind of defined as, uh, you know, we, we often think of our team. We might even think of suppliers, and I hope you do, because, you know, if you have a good relationship with one of your, your vendors, um, obviously they're an internal customer. But let me change your paradigm a little bit. I, I, we, I consider my, my UPS guy an internal customer. I mean, I'm a huge staff of one person, <laughs> but if he doesn't show up in the afternoons that I need him to to pick up my parcels, I'm out of business. So he's a vital part to doing what I do every single day. The reason I say that, and as I, we go throughout the presentation, I am going to use the word customer, and I want you to think internal and external. But the reason I say that is because there are only two issues on your customer's mind. The first is cost, and the second is value. And unfortunately, that's the ratio between the two. Now, let me explain. Right away, especially in this business, you know, we immediately think of cost, and we, we equate it to price. I didn't put price because price is only a small piece of the perceived cost of basically what, the, what you have to offer versus the perceived value, what's in it for me. Cost includes so many different things. It's just the perceived cost of doing business with you. That can be the hours you keep, your geographical location. It can be your reputation in the community. It's, there's all these costs versus the perceived value. So when I talk about being creative in this industry, 
I'm talking about how do we increase this value so it becomes a bigger issue than the cost issue. Um, I think I, I can explain. Quick story. Um, you know what I do for a living. I, I speak for a living. But what I really do is I sell dates on my calendar. I mean, that's what I do. If I sell a date on my calendar, it means business for my company. Going back to May of maybe five or six years ago, I took a 23-day trip, you know, 20-something days of speaking. Now, you don't know me that well, but even with my ego, I get sick of hearing myself talk. It's a long time. But even worse, I, I'd been away from my family for over, over three weeks. So I remember getting home and, and, and thinking about this. I had heard a thing of a thing in the speaking industry called, the, the, uh, at the time, the X day rule. In other words, you fill in the X with a number with which you feel comfortable. So I picked the, the five day rule. Basically, it went like this. Dad won't go out for longer than five days in a row. And if I do, I'll stay home for the same amount of time. So, so well, you know what happened. I mean, first teleport, I got home. Oh, and by the way, from that trip, I got home on a Tuesday night. And I'll, I'll tell you how I remember that in a minute. But I sat my family down. I told them about the five-day rule. And you know what happened first thing Wednesday morning. First thing, I get a telephone call from a guy. And he says, Jeff, I'd like you to come down and do a full day's uh, customer experience workshop with my entire staff. I said, Paul, you know, great. When? He said, check your calendar for some date in August. So I look at my calendar. It's a Saturday. I'm available. But I realized right away that I'm out for Monday through Friday the week before. Somebody is testing me. So I bite my tongue a little bit. I said, Paul, I can't do it. And before I could even tell him why, he said, Jeff, don't give up so easily. <laughs> now, who, who's selling who here? This is great. He said, when you were in Dallas, you told me you love video games. Now, I don't remember telling him that, but I do. I love video games. Anytime, anyplace, since I was a kid, I sit down and play a video game. And I'm talking old video, by the way, uh, Miss Pac-Man and uh, Asteroids. But some of you remember those. Oh, yeah. Said, We're really old, old Jeff. <laughs> there you go. See? <laughs> it's not just the glasses that make me old, right? <laughs> anyway, he said, We're holding our entire conference at a place in Dallas called Dave and Buster's. Now, I'm sure most of you know this place, right? But if you were to describe it, you'd probably describe it as an uh, adult Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> so what's happened? Paul doesn't realize why I can't make his engagement. But in, in, in uh, my mind, the cost is far greater than the value. In other words, the cost of doing his session is far greater than the perceived value that he has to offer. But by mentioning video games, guess what? <laughs> that starts to grow. And this is the, I really truly believe this is the key to success in the promotional products business today. Let me explain. I, I would venture to get that video games would not turn a lot of the people listening on. <laughs> but it was something about me, Paul's customer at that very moment, that he knew would increase the value specific to me. This is where your work comes in. It's no longer a one-size-fits-all for our customer. For every individual customer, internal and external, we have to figure out what is it that will increase the value specific to you at this very moment. And where your work comes in is that you have to keep doing it to assure that the value is bigger than the cost. In my scenario, it's still not big enough. I haven't told him about my five-day rule yet. I finally get a chance to explain it. You know what he said, Jeff? Don't give up so easily. What did he say? He said, uh, bring them with you. I said, who, my wife? He said, no, bring the whole family. Guess what? <laughs> that got a little bigger. <laughs> but the reality oh. is that I'm looking at my calendar, and I realized that um, Friday night, the night before he needs me in Dallas, I think I was in uh, Montreal, Canada, doing an after-dinner talk. There's no way that you can fly like from Montreal to Dallas after midnight or so in time to open up his 8 o'clock meeting. I fly all the time. It can't be done. I explained it to him. You know what he said? You guys know what he said. Jeff, don't give up so easily. Don't give hold. up so easily. Exactly. Private jet? Hold. Yeah, well, don't <laughs> ruin my story. Came back 20 seconds later. He said, no, oh, Paul. okay. There's a gas. Sorry. I said, Paul, what's the problem? You've heard it before. That's why I said, it is a problem. You can't, you can't possibly do it. He said, hey, Jeff, mute yourself, would you? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> he said, it isn't a problem if I send the company jets. And guess what? <laughs> that turned to that. Sure. And then I said, you send the jet, you don't worry, have to worry about my fee. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I'm just kidding, just, just in case somebody has a jet. <laughs> the point, as we go through this seminar, you know, in this presentation, anytime, I mean, this is an amazing service that you offer, Jeff. I mean, anytime you're listening to, to free promo tips, uh, success tracks, and, and, and you, you hear something that you want to take back, as messy as this is, keep this model in mind. We need to ask ourselves, how does it constantly increase the value versus the perceived cost of what it is we're asking our family, to, our family, our, our customer to do. All right, you be doing okay, Jeff? 
Uh, yeah, um, a- actually, I-, I will mute myself, but I, I do want to add, oh, I'm, I'm really I'm impressed, just... though, that you're no, no, that your your family actually wants you there. I would have thought they might have gone. No, 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 we don't like the five day rule. Okay, that, all right, that, 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 that's it. Ago, I'll, I'll, I'll I don't know they do anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Now they'll say, Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dad. All right. So I want to tell you a story, and there's a reason behind my madness. So bear with me, everybody. And this is kind of participatory, even though I can't hear you. I'd like you to kind of to play along, because the story takes place in this fictitious land, and through the middle of the land, as you can see, is a, a very uh, fast-flowing, very deep river. Uh, so fast-flowing, so deep, no human being can walk across it, they can't swim across it, they can't wade across it. On one side of the river, we find our first character. Her name is Miss A. Now, I am not an artist, especially on the computer. Here she is. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> anyway, on the other side of the river, we have our second character, and his name is Mr. Right, Mr. B. Now, Mr. B doesn't look much better. There he is on the other side of the river. Now, Miss A and Mr. B develop a wonderful relationship by yelling back and forth, but they know they can't get across to each other because the river is too fast flowing, too deep. One day they realize they've fallen madly in love. I know you're all going, ah. Well, I have to share with you, I do a lot of speaking in the HR business, uh, especially for the Society of Human Resource Managers. And when I say this to them, they fall madly in love, all I hear from the entire audience is, (gasps) that's HR, what can I say? All right, so they're madly in love. Out of frustration, Miss A yells to Mr. B, I love you so much, stay there. I'm going to find a way across this river. I hope you're cheering. She walks down the riverbank, and eventually she comes across, you know who, Mr. C. Now, Mr. C is just a little guy. You can cheer for little guys if you like. But Mr. C has a, what do you think it is? No, it's not a Christmas tree. (laughs) It's a boat. That's right, if you said that. He's got a boat. Miss A approaches Mr. C. Mr. C, Mr. C, can you help me? I'm in love with Mr. B, but I can't get across the river. The river is too fast flowing too deep. You have a boat. Will you take me across? He says, of course I will. Yay. If you'll kiss me. She said, what did you say? He said, that's right. I'll take you across. All you got to do is kiss me. She said, I can't kiss you. I'm in love with Mr. B. Mr. C says, then I can't take you across the river. Go away. Poor Miss A. But she knows we've got a little more screen. So she walks down the riverbank, and eventually she comes across Mr. D. That's right. Now, Mr. D is sitting. (laughs) Yeah. Miss A approaches Mr. D. Mr. D, Mr. D, will you help me? I'm in love with Mr. B, but I can't get across the river. The river's too fast flowing, too deep. Went went to Mr. C's, got a boat. He said, they kiss him. We kiss him. I'm in love with Mr. B. Mr. D, will you help? He said, no. She says, why not? He said, I don't want to get involved. Poor Miss A. But she makes up her mind. She decides to go back to Mr. C and to acquiesce. True to his word, he takes her across the river. She's finally on the other side. She runs to Mr. B. Mr. B, Mr. B, I'm here. He says, great. How did you get here? She said, thanks for asking. I was in love with you across the river, but I couldn't get across too fast, flowing too deep. I went to Mr. C's, got a boat. He said, the kids, well, we can kiss him. I was in love with you. Went to Mr. D. When did he get involved? Back to Mr. D. Gave him a little kiss. He brought me across, and here I am. Oh, you guys tried that at 1.19 in the morning, in the afternoon. <laughs> what a tough crowd, I can tell. Nobody has pity. Oh, well, Mr. B looks at Miss A and says, I don't want you anymore. She said, what did you say? He said, that's right, I don't want you anymore. If you had to do that just to get across the river, I don't want you anymore. Go away. Poor Miss A. Now, totally rejected, dejected, on the other side of the river, not knowing what to do, Miss A walks down the riverbank totally forlorn. But eventually, eventually she comes across Mr. E. And if you thought this was bad, watch this. Mr. E is not alone. Nope, Mr. E is on a horse. Miss A approaches Mr. E. Mr. E, Mr. E, can you help me? I'm in love with Mr. B, but I can't get across the river. The river's too fast flowing, too deep. I went to Mr. C, he's got a boat. He said to kiss him. I wouldn't kiss him. I'm in love with Mr. B, Mr. D. We, I went to Mr. D. He wouldn't even stand up. Went back to Mr. C, gave him a little kiss. He brought me across. Mr. B wouldn't take me anymore. What am I going to do? Mr. E looks at Miss A and says, I'll take you just the way you are. Ah, uh, I don't care about your background. I don't care what's happened. Hop onto my white horse. We'll ride off into the sunset. She does. They do. End of story. Yay. All right. I want to put you to work. I know that you're sitting there just listening, but I would like you to think about this for a second. If you have a piece of paper, this would be much easier to do. I'd like you to write down the numbers one through five in a column. One, two, three, four, five, top to bottom. One, two, three, four, five, top to bottom. You can do this on your phone, on your computer. All right, we have five characters, Miss A through Mr. E. 
as quickly as you can, I want you to rank them. I want you to rank them according to how much you respect them. In other words, number one will be the character you respect the most, number five will be the character you respect the least, and everybody in between. Now, getting to know, you know, obviously I know this business, and that sometimes we think uh, the way we think as distributors. I have one warning. Do not overanalyze these, all right? They're not real. But if you know the theme to Jeopardy, now's the time to hum it, sing it, whistle it. I can hear you. Number one, the one to respect the most. Number five, the least. Everybody in between. All right. How many of you, on that, by, you know, I wish I had a show of hands, but I would venture to guess that a lot of you chose Miss A. And if you chose Miss A, you know, why not? I put her at the top of the list. She, she, was persever she persevered. She was determined. Uh, the only woman up there, you might say. But how about the fact that she was resourceful? And I love that because what's resourcefulness in this business? It's, it's creativity. It's, it's working with limited resources uh, to get to our goal no matter what it takes. Could be the top of your list. But I don't know if any of you would uh, join me in putting her near the bottom of your list. I mean, this woman, <clears throat> excuse me, has no morals, has no principles. Uh, I'd say, what a hussy, right? She'd go with any one of these guys if they say yes, could be the bottom of your list. All right, let's go on. Mr. B, some of you have him near the top of your list? Sure. Um, Mr. B's got morals, he's got principles, and if they truly had this wonderful relationship, wouldn't she have known what he expected? I think so. But on the other hand, Mr. B could be the bottom of your list. I mean, the guy, first of all, why did he make her walk down the riverbank? Why didn't he do it? I know if there are any women on the line that you're going, yeah, and all the guys are going, huh? <laughs> Ladies, by the way, we see something in this story, us men, that you don't see. Right there in Mr. B's right hand is a little remote control. He's watching television. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> nah, but he could be the bottom of your list. What a jerk. He didn't appreciate what she had to do to get across the list. Yeah, the river could be the bottom of your list. Mr. C's got a boat. Did you put him near the top of your list? He's got a boat, for God's sake. I mean, he's got a price, and he's stuck to it. <laughs> There's a foreign concept for most of us sales <laughs> salespeople. <laughs> Over your head. Okay. But, and then again, could be like me near the bottom of your list. Took advantage of the situation. He's an opportunist. And maybe his price was a little unreasonable, seeing as he has the only solution up there. Or does he? Let's go on to Mr. D. He's sitting in a chair. Could he be the top of your list? Sure. Most honest guy up there. Um, I respect him because he didn't get involved, doesn't know what's happening down the river. Could he be the bottom of your list? Absolutely. This guy didn't even stand up when our damsel in distress came along. Didn't get involved. He didn't even, uh, you know, he didn't even acknowledge her or, or, or help. As a matter of fact, had he stood up, he might realize he's sitting in a chair. That chair might float. Sometimes we have to get off our back ends to find another answer to the exact same challenge. That's kind of creative thinking. We'll come back to that in a minute. But finally, Mr. E's on a white horse. Would you put him near the top of your list? The guy is non-judgmental. I'll take you just the way you are. The ladies in the group are going, yes, but he does not exist. <laughs> Forgot to tell you at the beginning, this is a fairy tale, right? Yeah, and, and so he could be the top of your list. But would you join me in putting him at the bottom of your list? This guy is so far down my list, he won't go any further. But I have an advantage. I've been telling this story now for a couple of years. I lay awake at night thinking about Mr. E. <laughs> There's a sick mind, I know, but... Here's my theory. Do you think he just happened to be sitting there on a white horse? I don't think so. I think this has happened before. Think about it. Miss, uh, he, had, miss, he didn't have a horse, and some woman got rejected, walked down the riverbank, walked right by him, didn't even notice him. He said, next time I'm going to get me a horse. Are you kidding? In my theory, these two guys, Mr. C and Mr. E, they're strategic partners. <laughs> it's my theory. Well, I hope you give yourselves a hand. You're doing great, all right, no matter what you chose. But what's the point? What has this got to do with creative thinking as it applies to what I'm calling the customer experience? Well, I hope you say that, you know, basically it's all about perspective. And that's what it is. Just because I put mystery at the bottom of my list doesn't mean I'm wrong. No, it just means I'm looking at things from a different perspective. And that's where it starts. I would venture to guess that some of you have been in this business a long time. And even if you haven't, what happens is we forget to step back and look at the business from a different perspective, the industry from a different perspective. I'll use an analogy. I'm not a photographer, but I would venture to guess that if I were, and I, I wanted to take a photo of a beautiful white snowy landscape, I'd pick up my camera and I'd put on a blue lens, because today I just feel like putting on a blue lens. I look through my camera, that landscape is now blue. But in reality, it hasn't changed. It's still white. But unless you look through my camera, you can't possibly see the same thing that I see. 
And perspective is a scary thing. You, know, you work with a customer for years and you think you know their perspective. And one day it changes instantly. And you're sitting there saying to yourself, whoa, what's the matter with her? Or what's the matter with him? When we should be saying, what's the matter with me? Why? Remember back to that value versus cost? If I'm constantly checking in with my customer to see what is it that will increase the value specific to you at this very moment, I'm never surprised that your perspective has changed. And perspective can change instantly. I mean, it can change because of something that happened from the minute they left home this morning till the minute they got to work. We constantly need to check with our customer to see what is it that will change your perspective, or what is your perspective, sorry, at this very moment. Let, let me prove it to you, if you'll allow me. I'm going to tell the story one more time, very quickly, as you know. Let me show you how quickly I can change your perspective by changing the gender. Watch what happens. On this side of the river, we now have Mr. A, all right? And on the other side of the river, we now have, of course, Miss B. Mr. A and Miss B on either side of the river for a long time, they fall madly in love. One day out of frustration, Mr. A yells to Miss B, I love you so much, stay there. I'm going to find a way across this river. He walks down the riverbank and eventually comes across, that's right, C. Now, Miss C has a boat. Miss C, Miss C, I'm in love with Miss B, but I can't get across the river. The river's too fast flowing, too deep. You have a boat. Will you take me across? She says, of course I will. If you'll kiss me, he says, okay. <laughs> End of story. <laughs> Different perspective. All right. Let's move on talking about perspective. And when we talk about perspective, and, and uh, Jeff, thanks so much about mentioning my older book as well. I mean, Coloring Outside the Lines is really what I built my entire career on. And in that book, um, one of the things that I talk about is perspective is everything. I like to use the analogy of a coin. And I like to say that there are only two sides to a coin. Uh, and and but basically, you can never see both sides at once unless you cheat and have a mirror. But um, in this business especially, because I know it so well, there are only two things we do in the promotional product business as a distributor. Really, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify it to this, knowing everything that you do really do. But the bottom line is this. We manage the business and we create value for our customer. That's it. We're always managing the business and creating value for the customer. There's no other reason for us to, to exist. The problem is this. Many of us focus on one versus the other, and that's where perspective comes into place. And the bigger our organization gets, the more we have people who do this for us. Our CFO focuses on business well, you know, while our customer service people focus on value. But if you're a one-person operation, you're juggling these two things all the time. Maybe it should be a scale because the challenge is we have to keep them balanced. We, yes, we always have to come up with new ideas and create value for the customer, but we have a business to manage. The other part is, yes, we can manage our business, but we constantly have to figure out how do we create value for the customer. So by thinking about the customer experience, internal and external, it starts to change our perspective. Um, I developed this thing in, in Coloring Outside the Lines in the book that I call the Harvey Principle. And I've shared it in the industry before, so bear with me, but I think it's the key to what you do. Um, I don't know if you ever saw the movie Harvey, but it was with Jimmy Stewart, and I saw it as a kid and took it a very face value, very entertaining movie. But uh, And then in case you haven't seen it, uh, Jimmy Stewart's character is the only one who can see this six-foot white rabbit that he's named Harvey. And um, then I, I, I watched it again years later, and, and for some reason I watched it from a very different perspective. Uh, even if you haven't seen the movie, at the mo beginning of the movie, they want to commit Jimmy Stewart's character to a mental institution. I mean, he's obviously crazy. He's the only one who can see this six-foot white rabbit that he's named Harvey. But watching from a different perspective by the end of the movie, I started to question whether or not he was the crazy one. I mean, maybe, just maybe it was everybody who couldn't see Harvey who was crazy. And I started to think, how does that affect our, our professional lives? So I developed this thing that I call the Harvey Principle. It's an entire, excuse me, those uh, chocolate-covered almonds have gotten to me, I think, but they're wonderful. Um, uh, it's an entire chapter in the book. But the bottom line is this. It's learning to see invisible opportunities where other people see only visible limitations. And that's what I think this entire industry is built on. How do we see invisible opportunities where everyone else says it can't be done, where everyone else says, we tried that four years ago, it doesn't work? And I want to stop here, and I certainly don't mean this to be the Jeff Tobe show or, or to be so town so self-centered, but... Jeff, you mentioned you know, winning uh, Golden Pyramid Awards, uh, so many in three years. One of the reasons I truly believe is because everyone in my organization, this was our motto. How do we see those invisible opportunities? How do we, thank you for the plug, by the way, but how do we anticipate? And that's why the book is called, the new book is called Anticipate, Knowing What Customers Need Before They Do. That's the key. 
Um, quick story that you all appreciate, and I've never told it outside the industry, but um, you know, I was working with a very large uh, liquor company at the time as one of my clients. And oh, they yeah, well, there, that's what happened there to you. <laughs> <laughs> they'll remain, they'll remain uh, nameless for now. But, but um, this is where the key came in. Is you know, they were basically saying we only have, they can only spend pennies at that time on promotional items uh, per item. Uh, so they, they're limited by regulation and everything else. And and I don't know where we came up with the idea, but we took their main logo, and their main uh, character. And at that time, it hadn't been done. I know that it's this is old stuff now. But we made it into a, a three-dimensional uh, keychain, and ended up uh, ended up selling them hundreds of thousands over the years. And that was just because everyone's. And, and by the way, at that time, there was nobody that could do that in this industry. I could not find anybody. So I had to, you know, find my own resources. I had to end up uh, contracting with another with a um, uh, manufacturer. But the bottom line was, that everybody said it couldn't be done. And that's where you've got to, you know, see those limitations and and run from there. As, uh, Jeff, hey, you hey and Jeff, I, I want to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I oh, the next slide I love. But I do want to yeah. interject this whole thing about people seeing limitations. I think there are a lot of people in the industry right now that are frustrated, you know, because yeah. of the changes and the online. Oh, hey, I can buy this online. And, you know, they and, and we can talk about creating, you know, value, value versus yeah. price. And that's always got to be the way it is. But. But um, I appreciate, you know, what you're, you're sharing there because I do believe a lot of people are frustrated and we can't give up on the idea that we can <clears throat> do a better job uh, th than the stuff seller by being creative and, and looking yeah. at, at meeting the needs and, and so forth. So, again, I think people are frustrated and uh, I, I just wanted to interject that. And by the oh, way, yeah. uh, I'm gaining like a lot of weight during this session. Yeah, Maple Ridge stuff. Farm, trees, while, I know. Yeah, while, <laughs> while I am off, off camera and, and at the end, I'm going to tell you how you can connect with uh, Maple Ridge Farms, by the way. But anyway, uh, take take it away, Jeff. I'm out of here. <laughs> no, that's fine. You know what? And, th and thanks for bringing that up. And, and, Jeff, it's no different in most other industries. Like, I know you, when you're in a profession, you think you're alone. But uh, the speaking profession is no different. I, with webinars and, and now holograms and everything else, do I really need to show up to speak anymore? I, and do we have to spend that kind of money to bring in a speaker? Well, I still think that nothing replaces the in-your-face you know, in-your-face relationship that you can have with the customer. That's not going to change in the speaking business. It's not going to change in the promotional products business. And, and looking at things from a different perspective and, and seeing invisible opportunities is what this business, your business, is all about. Uh, the example Jeff and I were talking about before we came on uh, online was the FedEx uh, logo. It's something you see every single day on a truck going by or, or a package you send out. But how many of you have ever seen that there is a giant white arrow in the FedEx logo? Now, if I have an audience, I would tell you that 80% of the audience will never have seen that before. So I'm going to guess it's the same here. And for those of you who haven't seen it before, the people who have will agree with me that we have just officially driven you crazy. Jeff, am I right? I know you're muted. Come back for a second. Uh, isn't it true that no matter what, you can't help but see it now? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, yeah. and I remember when I first met you and you showed, showed this, and, I, yeah. and now, of course, you always see it, and Linda uh, and others here are going, oh, my God, you know, now you can't not see it. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and the thing is, what, what's happening? Our, our left brain, that very analytical, detailed part of our brain, is trained to read it and move on, read it and move on. And that's how most distributors are trained. Um, next sale, move on. Fix it, move on. Order something, move on. When, in fact, now that I've made your right brain, the creative side, aware of what we call the opportunity, that white space, the key is your right brain will kick into it every single time. And my question is this, what's right in front of you? You've been working with this client for years. It's a, you walk by it in their plant, in their office, every time you go to visit them. It's an opportunity waiting to happen, but you've never allowed your right brain to kick in while you're doing these things. Uh, and, and, Jeff, I have another one to drive you crazy because I got to speak, I, I had to good fortune of speaking in India about a year and a half ago. And after I was done, a young lady came up to me and said, yes, but Mr. Tobe, what about the measuring spoon in the other E? <laughs> if I have to see it, oh. you have to see it every single time. All right, so now measuring I'll throw spoon. that at you. All right. <laughs> Let's move on. Wow. All right, I'm, Jeff, before I go on, actually, uh, should we? Are there any questions, or should I just keep going? You tell me. I'll take your guy. Yeah, let's see if any uh, have 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 come up. Um, somebody is is asking uh, in the measuring spoon and the arrow. Do you think there's some significance in uh, in that for FedEx as part of their brand? 
Oh, absolutely. It was the it arrow. Was, I, I think I, I could see. Yeah, I've worked with with FedEx. the The arrow was absolutely a uh, was absolutely uh, planned. You know, fast forward is basically the way they look at it. Um, you know, speed to you, whatever. The other two things, by the way, a lot of people see a uh, uh, an egg in the D, and they a measuring spoon. Those were not planned. So just so you know, but they. Um, but the arrow was absolutely planned, and uh, the, the logo was built around it. Yeah, I suppose All you right. could say that as it relates to measuring spoon, that um, you know, measuring up or I don't know, whatever. Yeah, yeah they but, could. But okay, they interesting. Didn't. All right. <laughs> okay, so let me get um, into the meat of this, if I can, and you tell me. Any other questions or? Oh, hey, by the way, uh, Jeff, before um, you go. Uh, uh, Phil is commenting measurable guaranteed results on that FedEx logo. See, we got Good. the branding people in here. My audience gets it. They're going to look yeah. for what you know what's there. Thank Absolutely. you for that. I love it. And if he comes up with something for the egg, let me know. It's not all cracked up with. <laughs> yeah, it's right. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Any ideas? All right. Keep going. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Great. So the second part of this after perspective is giving yourself an ask, an alternative solution kick. It just means when you've got the right answer, are you willing to set it aside and say, there's got to be more than one right answer? And here's the key. There's always, always, always more than one right answer to every single challenge your customer brings you. Historically, every invention, every creative idea, every innovative company started because somebody dared to look for the second right answer. So I'm going to skip some here, and I hate doing this to you, but we just don't have time. It's a little bit of fun stuff because I want to get to the meat, and here it is. The, these are some brands, some brands with whom I've had the pleasure of working with over the last 20-something years. All of these brands are, are, have one thing in common. They're known for one thing. What is it? Well, I hope you say customer service, because that's exactly what it is. They're all known for customer service. And so my question is this. I mean, if I had, if by a show of hands from all of you, um, if I were to ask you, are you in the customer service business, you would all say, absolutely, sure you are. But here's the thing, I don't believe you are. And, and the minute you understand this, the minute it will change your business because you're not in the customer service business. I don't know who told you that. And, and maybe years ago it worked for you, but when you realize what's happening sort of out there, I'll use these brands for example, and we bring it into this industry, it will change the way you do business. Let me take you through the, the evolution of customer service as I saw it. Back in the 1980s, you know, Nordstrom. Nordstrom was a great example. They basically sat their executives down and said, what if we could offer amazing, uh, knock your socks off customer service when our customer has a problem? Now, we sit here 30-something years later. We go, well, duh. I mean, that's what customer service is. But it was so unique at the time. And I remember, because I was in the business, we were walking around in the promotional product, actually, in those days, the ad specialty business, and um, saying to ourselves, we're going to solve our customers' problems beyond their expectations. That's what customer service was. Now it's the early 1990s. I get to work with a small car company by the name of Saturn, which is even smaller today, so it shows how good my work is, I guess. <laughs> but Saturn, <laughs> they sit their executives down and they say, we want you to study the Nordstrom model. We want to do something different. They said, what if we offered amazing knock-your-socks-off customer service all the time? Not just when our customer has a problem, we're going to offer it all the time. What happened? By the end of the 1990s, turn of the century, it's only 13 years ago, what happened? Everybody in this industry caught up. And we're all walking around saying we're going to offer amazing, knock your socks off customer service. But you know what? So is your competitor. Everyone says that. Things have changed. Two more brands. Let me just go through this quickly. But uh, Four Seasons Hotels and Resorts, depending on where you're located in the world, I was just told yesterday, I was in uh, Denver, and a woman from Four Seasons was in my audience, that Four Seasons was just tied in some worldwide survey with Ritz-Carlton Worldwide for everything, from ambiance to food to service, number one in the world, and Starbucks. Everybody knows Starbucks, and everybody uses Starbucks as an example. But if I were to say, are you a Starbucks fan, and you said yes, I'd use this example. Imagine that I have a handful of coffee beans, and I take them to, to I bring them to you, and I say, you are now McDonald's. How much do you charge me for supersized coffee at McDonald's? A dollar? A dollar fifty? Okay. So now give me my beans back, and now I go to Starbucks. Now Starbucks, um, obviously when I was doing my homework, what I found out was Starbucks uses a better bean than McDonald's. But for an entire handful, they cost about a nickel more. Now I come back to you and I say, now you're my Starbucks. 
how much would you charge me for a super size coffee at Starbucks? What would you say? $3? Three fifty, four dollars. I was in Edmonton, Alberta, a couple months ago in Canada, and the guy said to me, "You know, we, in Canada, we don't call it Starbucks anymore." And I'm such a sucker, you know. I said, "You don't?" He said, "No, we call it four bucks, just four bucks." I kind of like that, but anyway, four bucks. So wait. Four, bu- four bucks. Yeah. got it. Yeah. So the, the the beans cost me a nickel, you know, cost a nickel more, and you're charging me four times the amount. Well, hold on. Let me take my beans back, and now we'll go to the Four Seasons Hotel. Uh, we get to go to the Four Seasons Hotel in beautiful, uh, in the beautiful Pacific Island of Bali. <laughs> Somebody had to go, right? <laughs> so, beans in hand. I now come to you and I say, you represent my Four Seasons Hotel in Bali. How much do you think you charge me for a cup of coffee in the restaurant every morning in Bali? Eight dollars and twenty something, twenty-five cents, I think it was, for a cup of coffee, and I paid it every single morning. Why? It wasn't because I was on an expense account, and it wasn't because I, you know, I'm addicted to coffee. No, none of that. And it wasn't because of customer service. What it was about was the customer experience. And let me explain. I know that in our minds we use this word all the time, but there's a huge difference between customer experience and customer service. See, my experience at the Four Seasons Hotel is far different than my experience at Starbucks than is far different than my experience at McDonald's. And once we start thinking about the customer experience, we realize that customer service is an integral part of the customer experience, but the customer experience is what is the experience my customer has from the minute they make contact with us till the minute they're done. And I don't care if you're just a one-person operation. This does involve your vendors. It involves every time I leave you a message, how quickly you get back to me. It involves, you know, uh, if I happen to walk in, if you have an office where I can come see you, I walk in, what's the first thing I smell, the first thing I hear? It involves everything about it. It's the way we dress when we go visit a a potential customer. The experience is everything. So it's so much more than just customer service. So it's easy to say, but it's a giant leap. Because here's what happens. I think that that we make the uh, leap from customer service, which is satisfied customer. And believe me, most of us are happy nowadays with a satisfied customer. But that's not what's going to set us apart out there from our competition. If you just want to offer great customer service, great. You'll be competing. I don't know if anybody has ever read it, but I want to recommend a great book. It's called Blue Ocean Strategy. And the bottom line is you'll be competing in competing in what they call red oceans. It's filled with bloody wars, bloody competitive wars. Instead, it's about creating blue ocean. And that's that lead to customer experience, where we have a loyal external customer and an engaged internal customer. That's what we're, we're striving for. And the only way we can do that is by thinking about the customer experience. So how do we do it? it here's why. Well, not one more reason. I think there's really only four things. What, what makes you different in this? I was thinking this morning, what are some of the things that, that you have to offer your customer? We've got product, we've got price, we've got experience, and we've got delivery. Well, three of those four that are, you see in green are not going to set me apart from everybody else. What have I got? I've got the experience, my creative thinking, the ideas I can come with, anticipating what you need, before you before you need them. So how do we do it? We look at loyalty. Loyalty is a huge part of this. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm just going to skip through for a second. The, to do to uh, sort of make customers more loyal to us, we need everyone walking down around, especially us, saying, "What is the put in the name of your organization here experience?" That's kind of like everything that's imprinted. You know, fill in your name here. Isn't that right? Anyway, what is the experience? blank experience. And once we start asking that, we start to become what I call more customer centric. And it's my entire goal is to get you to start being more customer centric, customer focused, not internal focus, but customer focused. So by doing that, we have to understand that every transaction with our customer cannot not be an experience. Every transaction cannot not be an experience. Does that make sense to everyone? And so the question becomes, how random or how managed is the experience that you're delivering? The more managed the experience, the better the outcome for the customer. Let me explain. Starbucks is the best example. Starbucks, if you don't think it's one of the most uh, managed retail experiences you will ever have, you're kidding yourself. Um, Do you realize that they are required to, not asked to, they're required to grind coffee every X amount of minutes? Why? Did you say smell or did you think of sound? Absolutely, those are the two reasons. But here's what's happened you may not realize. Starbucks has proven scientifically that the combination of that sound 
and the smell makes you think of one word. What's the word you're thinking? Fresh. Freshness. We don't know if it's fresh, but they've proven that by grinding coffee, the smell and the sound, that you will start thinking that the coffee is fresh. And what happens when you think it's fresh? You'll pay four times the amount you would at over at McDonald's. So that's what I'm talking about, a managed experience. How about the fact that you will never sit in one of those comfy, overstuffed chairs at a Starbucks you know, or, or sofas that has a rip in it or a hole in it? Do you realize that they can lose their store if their furniture is worn? That's how managed the experience is. So you know, we have to start thinking about how do we manage the experience? How do we, uh, what, do, what can we do in our little way to manage the experience for the customer? So the third part of this and the last part, it's, it's not simple, easy to say, not easy to do. How do we shatter the stereotype of the experience our customer expects to have with us every time we walk through the door? And that's always based on reputation. Let's say it's a prospective customer. It's on whatever's happened to them in the promotional products, you know, as it relates to promotional products in the past. It's a little easier to shatter the stereotype then. But how about the customer we've been dealing with for the last 10 years, uh, you know, and we're very comfortable with. We do all the promotional products. And then one day they come to us and um, they, say to us, they say to you, oh, you do binders? I didn't know you did binders. We just ordered 100 binders, right? Well, whose fault is that? You've been dealing with them for 10 years. It's not their fault. It's the fact that you didn't shatter the stereotype of the experience they expect to have with you. So they're constantly going to be putting you in boxes that you need to break out of. And shattering the stereotype is all about looking at the customer experience. Um, so I did my homework. Uh, I'm very proud of myself, but I found the future of the promotional products professional. I thought if it doesn't work out, you can all deliver pizza. <laughs> Let me explain. Um, I don't love pizza. I, I think I got <laughs> Pizza out in college, you know, yeah, but my family loves pizza, so they tend to order pizza when I was traveling, and, and it worked out fine because that's what I do. But um, uh, years ago, my wife called me one day. She's stuck in traffic, 6 p.m. She said, honey, order a pizza for the, the kids and me. I said, that's great, but since we've lived in Pittsburgh, I've, I've never ordered a pizza. Who do we order pizza from? She said, we order from Mama Leone's Pizza, and the number's on our refrigerator magnet up on the refrigerator. Now, I would venture to guess that everyone who's listening, um, there's no one who's ever ordered pizza from beautiful, Mama, I mean, from Mama Leone's uh, Pizza in beautiful downtown Trafford, Pennsylvania. But I would also venture to guess <laughs> everyone in, in, that's listening has had the exact same experience. You know when you call for takeout and it's no more than a 10-year-old kid who answers the phone, right? And, and he's way too happy for even me. <laughs> yeah, and you, Jeff, as well, because we both decided we have this self-diagnosed ADD, right? So, yeah, he's just way too right. happy. And he says to me, uh, it, it, here's how it sounded. It goes, uh, good evening. I'd like to welcome the Tobe household. Now, understand something. My last name is Tobe, as most of you know. But when I get those calls, and I'm sure you get them, 6 p.m., you're just about to buy something, or you're just about to eat something, and they want to sell you something over the telephone, they never get my name right. Uh, Toby, Tobe. I, I know when they hesitate, I'm in big trouble. Is this Mr. To Be or Not To Be? <laughs> anyway, I'm impressed. <laughs> Obviously, this kid has caller ID. I mean, how else would he know he's calling? But two things go through my mind. Either he's a great guesser because he just guessed my name right, or <laughs> my wife orders way too much pizza is what I'm thinking. <laughs> anyway, he said, I'd like to welcome the Tobe household. Who am I speaking to tonight? I said, this is Jeff Tobe. He said, oh, Mr. Tobe, you've never called before. So now two things go through my mind. E either he's got some kind of database, like a computer that tells him who's called or who hasn't called, or, <laughs> yeah, my, my family orders way too much pizza. <laughs> So I said, no, I haven't. He said, will it be the regular? Oh, now I'm into the game, right? I want to challenge the kids. So I said, you tell me what the regular is. He said, half cheese, half pepperoni. I said, that's exactly right. I, I'm impressed. Now, I want everybody to keep your perspective. I swear, no more than 10 years old. He said, Mr. Tobe? He said, uh, can I ask you a personal question? I'm thinking, how personal can it be, for God's sake? He's 10 years old. I said, oh, okay. He said, have you fixed the light on your front porch? Whoa. Now two things go through my mind before any of you get too far. Let me tell you what went through my mind. In my mind, this kid just aged like, um, I don't know, seven years, and I picture him on my front porch with my then 16-year-old daughter, and the lights are burned out. <laughs> then I'm thinking, no, 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 he's not old enough. So the second thing, this is a conspiracy. Oh, my wife had been asking me to fix that stupid light for like three months before this. Somehow she got together with a pizza kid, and it's a conspiracy. So I said, 
said to him, why would you answer that? ask me that? And his answer blew me away. He said, because last time my driver tried to deliver a pizza to your house, apparently the light was burned out. He had a hard time reading the numbers on your address. I don't want your pizza to arrive cold. Have you fixed the light on your front porch? I said, no, but it'll be fixed by the time you get here. <laughs> I, I think, oh, actually, I, I think it's, I'll be standing out at the, the driveway with a flashlight when you get here. The point. Uh, if you'll excuse the pun when we're talking about pizza, there are three major ingredients that I want you to think about today. Number one, it's not about customer service. It's about the customer experience. Number two, it's about shattering the stereotype of the experience your customer expects to have with you. And number three, it's about understanding our customer better than anybody else. And then I'll add my own. And then working with them in a way in which they need to be worked with, not a way in which you've been used to working with them. Let me say that again. It's about working with our customer in a way in which they, they, they've been used to, or they need to be worked with versus the way we've always worked with them before. Perspective. Jeff, um, tell me what we, how we're doing on time and questions. Uh, I want to finish up, but I'll leave this until the end so we can take some questions if there are. Well, I continue to enjoy the Maple Ridge <laughs> snacks. Uh, stop eating. <laughs> so, oh my God, it's unbelievable. This is going to be a very, you know, very, um, well, what can I say? Uh, yeah. Uh, weight, <laughs> weight gaining day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you uh, there. Um, yeah, a couple of things um, that, that there are a couple of questions that have come in, and I just want to uh, make note of uh uh, a book that I read some time ago, I'm sure you're familiar with it. it it's the E-Myth, right? Where they talk about yeah. anticipating all needs. Absolutely. Sure. And, and that's not even a business book. You know, it is, but that's not even just business. I mean, that's, that's in life uh, to pre 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 anticipate needs before they have them. Sure. Right, and we do that right. all the time. And we then do that with our kids when they're babies. You know, why can't we do that and baby our customer as well? So. Right, and, and, and this whole stereotype, I think, that, that's in the promotional products industry that we're in, uh, stuff sellers, I, I think that the, the key around that, and, and we've talked about this as it relates to the, the whole experience thing, is, is us being able to be creative and, and create, um, just go beyond the stuff. That's what's going to make the difference between uh, somebody who just sells stuff and, yeah. and those who, uh, who uh, are, are really on this level and people who... And <clears throat> would take the time to attend this webinar or go to trade shows and learn more. You know, they're the people that are going to have a uh, competitive advantage. Let me see here some questions. Um, yeah, I do want to say, you, you just hit the nail on the head yes. because, you know, you've got uh, X amount of people on this on this webinar. So many people are going to look at the archives after, I hope. And, and those are, it's like preaching to right. the choir. <laughs> you know, they're probably not the ones who need to hear all this that because they, probably, they, are, they are extending themselves by attending a webinar like this by – you know, being part of your, your audience. And so, um, but they have a huge advantage because obviously they're on the right track and thinking creatively. Uh, I hope I just, you know, sparked some ideas. Go ahead. Yeah, right. And it reinforces that, you know, because, uh, and that, that that's really, you know, really what we need. Um, so let me see. There's a question here. Wouldn't an important part of making the value bigger than the cost require investing in your internal customers training expectations and management so that you know that that's a pretty good good point absolutely. um yeah absolutely you know, there was a, there was a study done um the end of 2011 so it's not that long ago it's done by the gallup organization you know gallup poll and they found that uh, in america in the united states only 43 percent of americans are engaged at what they do every day and that's pathetic. It was one of the lowest in the world. I mean, even in Canada, it was 50-something percent. But in the States, it's 43 percent. What does that mean? It means 57 percent of Americans go to work just because they have the job. They need the job. They want the security. And so I relate that question to engagement. Uh, yes, training and everything else, but the bottom line is, is how do we get our people more engaged at what they do? And that's our, And by the way, I have to put in a plug, in Anticipate, the book, we talk about employee engagement and customer engagement, which is a huge part of the customer experience. You know, how do we get our people more engaged? Well, by driving the message through the organization that it is about the experience, not about customer service. Why? Because you've got people maybe in the organization, and again, it depends on the size, right, Jeff? If you're a one-person operation, it's a little different than if you've got seven or 15 people. Um, but 
what hap by driving that message through the organization, what happens is people start to say, no matter what my contribution, even if I'm not in sales and I'm not really uh, front-facing, if you will, to the customer, no matter what my contribution, even if I'm part-time, uh, I am part of the customer experience, it starts to get me more engaged. And that's the key. I, I love that somebody asked this because that's the key, I think, to the, to the experience. How do we get our people more engaged at what they do? Yes, proper training, proper, you know, everything uh, is, is a key. Right, exactly. There's another comment here um, that, that came over. Oh, wow, there's, there's a bunch here. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, it seems that the key to competing with strictly online businesses is the personal opportunity we have uh, in creating value, and I think we would all certainly uh, agree. And sure. um, uh, and another comment, this is really great. And by the way, uh, we really would appreciate if you guys have comments on the session and a quote we can use. I do have an e-news that are coming out tomorrow. I'd love to include one for this. But uh, feel free to email Jeff at freepromotips.com. But uh, uh, here's, here's another comment. Learn to see invisible opportunities where other people only see visible limitations. This quote is so impacting. And uh, I think we would... I, I think uh, agree. It's, uh, there. I think it's key. And I mean, going back, Jeff, when you started in the business, you know, the 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 wording then, or the, I guess the trend then, was product uh, versus program. If you remember that, you know, how do we become mm. program salespeople versus product salespeople? And if you think about it, all it was was this looking for opportunities where everybody else saw limitations. It was taking a frisbee that you would sell imprinted. And saying, well, what if we put the, uh, you know, an invitation in the back, and we, you know, sent it to everybody before they attended? I mean, it became a program, and so the ability to do that and to see those opportunities is what sets you apart. I think what makes you different than everybody else out there. Right, absolutely. And uh, Phil makes makes a good point. Um, I don't know which brilliant Jeff he's referring to. I'm assuming a it few, uh, Jeff Toa, oh, it's but. Me. Yeah, it must be you. <laughs> so uh, uh, Phil is, is saying what Jeff is talking about is game-changing and done correctly brings the element of reciprocity full front stage. I love it. Yeah, and reciprocity yeah. for those of you who don't know, you know, obviously that's and, – and Phil, what a great point when we're talking about what sets you apart from me just ordering online, right? Um, it's that – it just boils down to the relationship. Uh, I don't ever – I don't care – uh, how many people I talk to at Zappos, you know, it's still an online business. They're wonderful to deal with, but I don't have a relationship with them. And so your advantage is that face-to-face -face relationship. I can run out to your office. It's, you're in a touchy-feely business, aren't you? I mean, I hate to say that, but really I can touch and I can feel the product or what the end result. So bring it to me because that's what's going to set you apart. I can't touch it and feel it on the, on the Internet. Right, and and really uh, moving into something, and none of this truthfully has, has been orchestrated at all, but speaking of touching and feeling uh, product, uh, the, the sponsor who, who uh, in addition to, to Vernon Company, a, a great distributor organization focused on education, who supported this, our, our other sponsor for this particular session is Maple Ridge Farms, and, and we talked a little bit about uh, samples and such for the attendees, and, and, and I love what Tom Rudin said as he goes, uh, contact us. Let's, you know, you know, we just don't want to send out stuff. If there's a client that, that, uh, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, they like, uh, these amazing, uh, uh, honey roasted peanuts or, whatever, you know, right. in, in any event, Maple Ridge Farms is saying, Hey, talk to us. Let's see what we can do to help you, uh, generate some sales and, and food gifts are, are good all, all year round. And as I've discovered Ooh. here, always appreciated oh. <laughs> and, and enjoyed. So, um, I would encourage you to contact marketing at Maple Ridge Farms and, and mention this session. Just talk to them about what your needs are so that you can then uh, work with them. And they also are very focused on education, by the way, uh, yeah. doing uh, – if you're not getting their blog posts, it's not all about selling food stuff. It's, it's information uh, as well. So they do a great job with that. And uh, while we're yes. at plugs – yes, sir. Yes, Jeff. No, sorry. sorry. Let me put in a plug. Well, two things. Um, I, I used to use Maple Ridge Farms as one of my suppliers all the time. And, and I'll tell you, after having been a supplier now, you know, on the other side, um, one of the things that drove me crazy were distributors who would call me and say, uh, Jeff, um, I need a case history. Well, they don't understand that every order that goes through a factory is a case history. <laughs> it may not be a great one, but it's a case history. 
And but the point I'm trying to make is when you partner, you know, with a, 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 a when you partner with a supplier like Maple Ridge Farms, uh, and you actually partner with them. And again, I'm going back to anticipate. <laughs> In other words, I have this customer. Here's what they do. I need something great. Help me. If not just sell product. Let's come up with ideas together. It is about partnering between in this business more than any other between distributor and, and vendor. Sorry, I'll get off my high horse. <laughs> no, no, I, exactly. And um, and we're very fortunate. There are some really, really great suppliers we work with. And and also continuing to, to plug those companies, uh, Warwick Publishing, uh, amazing. Uh, Phil Martin, if you see Phil at a trade show, uh, this guy's full of ideas. And you can contact Warwick Publishing. They do, uh, you know, calendars and, and folders and, and uh uh, pad pad folios and all that kind of stuff that, that are used all, all the time. So yeah. uh, great for cold calling, you know, or sales calls. Anyway, so Warwick's there to help again with creative ideas and uh, and also Snugs USA. Uh, you know, they do far more than lanyards now as well, uh, hand sanitizers and and, and uh, other products. So Snugs is great and NAIA uh, again another great distributor organization. These are title sponsors to what we're doing with Free Permits. Makes it all right. possible. And uh, since we are pretty much just over 11, we got to plug Anticipate, right? Yes. Let's, uh, actually, I have a special offer. And, and by the way, that last slide is simple. It was just the need to exercise our risk muscle. Oh, I have a special offer, but it's not showing. <laughs> so so uh, you have to bear with me. Oh, there's you. Uh, there's me. But that's not even what I wanted to show you. The the, the special offer is, is this. Um, if anyone orders Anticipate that's listening to this, and, and it's just, by the way, the website is just buy b u y anticipate dot com if you order that and you just send me proof of your purchase that it's a receipt you're going to get from Amazon or whoever um, send it to me at jeff at jefftobe dot com I'll send you uh, free um, the my second book coming outside the lines free uh, via an ebook so you just have to tell me or show me that you bought the the book anticipate online anywhere and um, and Send it to me, Jeff at JeffTobe.com, and I will send you the free download the ebook, uh, Coloring Outside the Line. Right, excellent. And another uh, comment uh, came through, and and uh, I, I know some people from Maple Ridge are, are on the line, and uh, this comment, a comment basically is Reardon so S O all caps gets the experience factor. You saw it when we got the packages, which are now totally torn apart. During the, the session, but that impact, that experience, um, yeah. present presentation, you know, is everything. So um, we want to value your time, and we we really very much uh, appreciate uh, those that attended. And uh, uh, feel free to contact marketing at Maple Ridge Farms, as well as uh, info at Warwick Publishing, and I, I believe samples at at, at SnugsUSA.com. They would be happy. To, to help you with any of your, your, your needs. And again, thanks to the Vernon Company uh, that sponsored this section this session in AIA. We love our distributor companies that, that support our education efforts. Truly, uh, it's not possible without you guys. And Jeff Tobe, uh, hey, thank yeah. you so much for taking time. Uh, My uh, pleasure. I'm glad it's you're on the five-day thing. We cut you in <laughs> town. It's, obvious, it, it's also a, a truly not only a pleasure, it's a privilege when I get to speak in this business. So thank you. All right, excellent. Hey, thanks. You guys all make it a great day. Thanks.